Rob, I'll just shoot the guy. We've heard this. I'm, yeah, I'm going to put right. air quotes on. How long have you been fighting the battle against that just kind of limited philosophy? Uh, since I was a cop, right? So going back to the 90s, really, right? And and the the origin of the Extreme Close Quarters Counter Ambush Program that we ran for SF guys, NSW, lots of SWAT guys, personal defense guys, and obviously like executive protection, the origin of that Extreme Close Quarters Counter Ambush is what people now today are calling integrated training or integrative training. One There's lots of good people in this space. Craig Douglas is in this space. Todd Fossey's in this space. Lots of guys are talking about it, but 20 something years ago, it was really a big separation between the guys who were, you know, drawing the gun and shooting and then the guys who were wanting to fight. And even in law enforcement training, you know, you dress like you're dressed to go to the dojo or go to the mat room to do yeah. your defensive tactics. And then you, you know, not dress like this, but you put your, you know, something else on you do your tactical training. And it was the SWAT guys that really needed to have an overlap. And it was so obvious because SWAT guys don't, you know, move around and shoot people 99.99% of the time. They move around and then have to grab people and push people out of the way. Right. So fight or controlling someone while you're holding the gun, wearing another gun with 30 or 40 other pounds of gear on you became the thing. And that Extreme Close Quarters Counter Ambush turned into the program we ran, again, for military guys deploying because it wasn't just throw a grenade in the room and then after it went off, go in and make sure everybody's down. You were going in, you were moving through crowds, very dense areas, you were grabbing people, capturing people, high value assets were being brought back, not just shot. So we had to teach them to fight with guns in their hands too. So where are we now, let's, let's say 20 years ago, yeah. was here. Where are we now as far as people finally getting that message? Because there's still a lot of fantasy role playing and uh, I'll just shoot the guy or yeah. I'm a knife guy, I'm a fucking badass. Right, right. I mean, so, or, or you know, uh, guns aren't my thing, right? Yeah. Um, like I just do, I'm just going to do this. You yeah. know, and, and has it, it changed? It has. It has it changed. Are we making I think we're changed. Changed. The fact that, you're, that you came to me and you're like, hey, so here's what I'm doing in, in this and that and in the defensive world and I'm fighting this fight. You know, people are asking the question more. People realize the question needs to be asked and especially at the higher level thinking areas which include the instructors. Like most instructors would tell you the gun isn't the answer to everything. I think even most personal defense instructors are unarmed when I say that, I mean unarmed uh, martial arts, you know, combatives, whatever, defensive tactics, those guys, I think most of them understand that there's a time and a place for the overlap, right? Even Black Belt Magazine, right? 2010, I had the honor of being on the cover of Black Belt Magazine, and they said, you know, the American martial art is personal defense with a gun, right? It's defensive shooting. And, and we got to talk about this and have this conversation about how the real thinkers, the people that are really training for personal defense in gun world, were not just thinking that gun's gonna solve everything. And in fact, there's times right now, if you come at, if you came at me right now, and I know I do probably could put a blade on me like this, right? And don't but don't demo. Right? <laughs> but yes, if you came out with that blade and I went for my gun, I'd yeah. be dead before the gun even thought about hurting you. And even if we had a bad tie, I don't want to die just to kill you. So I have to learn to control that hand, control that blade, fight with you and then fight to my gun. We've been talking about it for a long time. Lots of people have. Um, I think it's trickling down because there's still a lot of people at the, at the base level, like, sort of like the hobbyist level, mm -hmm. I think, the people that put their toe in the water and want to take that two-day two class and think right. they're done, that either are choosing the martial art or the, the gun and not realizing that it's all personal defense. That's a bigger pool than I had first anticipated. And I think whenever there is a demand for that kind of fluffiness, yeah. let's call it that, yep. There's no shortage of instructors who are willing to supply on that demand. So for me, the work really begins with cultivating the soil uh, mm -hmm. in terms of in terms of what the students, the participants, the hobbyists. What are they demand. looking for? Exactly. What are they looking for? Exactly. So I believe me, I'd, I'd like to run uh, 10 extreme close quarters shooting or extreme close quarters tactics classes a year, but there isn't enough demand, right? And like I said, there are a lot of other guys that are doing it now. And I even tell people like, look, I'm, I travel, I work mostly on the defensive shooting part, shooting at beyond extension. I do some of the close quarters. I do some of the close quarters striking, some of the close quarters grappling, but it's not my thing. I want you to go to that Muay Thai guy to get the striking. I want you to go to the Jits guy to get the grappling, but I want you to come to me for the close quarter shooting and learn that they all have to work together. You know, one guide isn't going to have all the answers. I don't have the high level answers for striking and grappling, but I've got, I've got some ways to integrate the basics to my advanced defensive shooting stuff. So people want, people want the magic pill. People sure. want the easy thing, right? If we can meet them halfway, yep. what are, what are three, what are a handful of things that everyone who, who carries, um, as far as intermediary hands-on skills, what, what do you think they need to at least 
be familiar with? I, I tell everybody, take, take at least a two-day defensive pistol shooting class if you're going to carry a gun. If you're interested in personal defense with that gun, two-day defensive pistol shooting class. Spend six months in a Brazilian jiu-jitsu gym that's teaching not from a sport but from a combative perspective, and spend three months in a Muay Thai gym learning close quarter striking. If you just practice what you got out of those two days of pistol training, the three months of striking training, and the six months of grappling training, you're going to be a more dangerous person than 99% of the guys that are just carrying the gun, shooting paper, and doing it every weekend. 99. No, I, I, I'll go 99%. I, 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 I would agree with that. So there you go. There's there's sort of at least a, um, it's just an easy map, right? Yeah. And it's got, obviously, exactly. there's a lot of, somebody's, you know, somebody's going to be like, well, no, this teaches better striking than Wrestling than instead of like, jiu-jitsu, boxing instead of You understand the Muay premise, Thai. right? And here's the thing. If you just, if you if you think it's going to take you six years to learn how to throw an elbow up close, like, right. you're, you're in the wrong place. Like, you're going to learn how to throw that elbow, how to throw that short punch, how to throw that knee. You're going to learn how to escape from somebody, you know, you get in the guard or escape from, from a grapple or get your wrist free. You're going to learn all those things in that first three to six months and then just practice the basics. Yeah. You don't have to do the magic, you know, sure. elbow this, turn the pinky that way, and is it leg breaks? Or that's whatever. right. Like, that's not what this is about. And it's a perishable skill, you know? So, right, so, so practice the basics. Exactly. <sighs> I'm going to let out a, a big sigh again. This is something that I, I'm, I'm new to this mm -hmm. battle. And it, it's, it's good to know that guys like you who have been doing it uh, for such a long time, spreading this message for such a long time, um, that you're still enthusiastic and passionate about this. Oh, for it can, sure, get, it can for get, sure. get real tiring, right? These conversations Absolutely. can get just, Absolutely. oh, man, but really you know what I'm excited. Explain this again. You are going to help me spread this message, right? More than me talking to my Instagram feed or me talking to the right. gun people, you're talking to people over here that might not even factor the gun in as an option because I'm afraid what they see when they go look at, well, how I, maybe I'll look into this gun thing and they peek around the corner and all they see is guys wearing camouflage yeah. and helmets and like, you know, it's like, that's not it. That's yeah. not it, right? So there are some of us out here who understand it's about the basics and that we must integrate so if you are listening from you know the martial arts on arm side and you're like what about the guns check out some of the stuff I did if you don't mind I was plug it like with Black, right, with Black Belt it. Magazine check out some of the work we did with Black Belt Magazine it was around 2009 10 11 couple articles um, a lot of videos on their website about this integration and then obviously personaldefensenetwork.com we've got a lot of videos and not just me we've also got Craig Douglas in there Tony Blower some of the other people Todd Fossey who've been thinking and doing this integration for, for some, in some cases decades like I have Rob Pincus, thank you so much. Man. Amen. Thank I you. Always a pleasure. Man. Thank you. All right, guys, that's it.